welcome to the Ismeric Art Studio. So today there's no project. It is going to be a tutorial on how to use the dry needle tool. So this is the dry needle tool and I'm going to be talking a little bit more about that. But what are we using it for? Um, we're using it basically to cut out. So when you want to do some inlay work, this is where you're going to cut around so that you can expose your layer beneath the side i've just used a different color um, but yeah those are the kind of things that you will need it for and um, back when we did the little hand um, canvas as well we also used the dry needle tool to cut around all the hands so i've done this uh, mandala it is a sun and moon mandala and i was just thinking this would be a perfect way um, to do to finish it off is to cut it out and then add it to my canvas so what are we going to need first thing is you are going to need your needle point tool so they come in different sizes i have a size two and a size three so depending on what i'm doing when i work with finer things i will go to the number two if i like today when i'm just going to do the outline i will definitely um, use the number three these are very sharp so if you do have some please make sure that you always keep them covered and if you don't have the needle tools there's always something else that you can use so what you can use is you can use plain scissors these are the little scissors that can cut right up until the end this is a little scissor that i bought oh so many years ago it's rounded it's got a rounded tip so that works very well so you can also use um a cutting board or a cutting mat and an exacto knife that can work perfectly as well it's just that you know when you look at the point of the exacto knife compared to the point from the needle point it is definitely a little bit finer um, to go in with that so as I said, you can use a cutting board. You can use the cutting board even if you cut with the dry needle tool as well. Personally, I prefer working on a piece of glass. So I also have, when I'm doing smaller um, pieces, I have a piece of mirror that I have. Oh, I'm busy working on a head there. I have a piece of mirror that I have and sometimes I just cut on that this is a very nice way to work with your pewter when you want to cut around and but you have to be careful because if you slip and i think i will mention it throughout the process as well if you slip you can really cut yourself with this okay so let's see where we're going to start so the first thing to remember is when you cut you always need to cut towards you the reason apart from that it is easier to cut that way because you have more control you do have more control as well as you can really see what you are doing so i've gone ahead and i've already filled my project with wax as i've mentioned and i have added my tape on you don't need to do this before the time but it's sort of a double step if you glue it on afterwards although if you use contact glue or you know liquid glue that is a different story then you don't need to put your um, double-sided tape on but for me i have already put this on because this is going to go onto a black canvas wood canvas so all i'm going to do is i'm going to start from my point up there and i'm going to input my needle and i am literally going to trace the outside and i'm going to go back in and i am going to trace it so you will feel the moment when you go through the um, pewter as well as when you go through the tape if you do use tape i'm going to put my needle in there and i'm just going to follow it's almost like you know tracing and then i've just gone a little bit wider so i'm just going to go and trace it and i don't know if you can hear the sound on the video but you can literally hear it once you are gone through again just put in and I am going to, and something that I find as well that is working for me is 
rather than trying to move my hand, I find it sometimes easier just to move the pewter or the pewter with the piece of glass. Um, but it's with everything in life. What works for me might not work for you. The basics or the techniques is the same, but you might find that there is a different way that you like um, cutting or prefer to cut. And yeah, and, and that's a, the one that you are going to use as long as what you have your basics. So what you can do is you can cut through here and you can also cut through here. And as you are cutting, you can actually remove the um, pieces and then you can see. So in the end, you will see we will go over with our needle and just smooth out all those rough edges. Sometimes the rough edges is caused more by the, the tape than what it is actually the metal. And as you can see, I can slide my finger over here. It is quite smooth. So try and work in long smooth um, movements. So now again, I, I can either go in from this side, but I've learned through experience to go to the outside. And the reason for that is it has not happened once. It has happened more than once that when I go this way, then I get there and I slip and I would cut into my design. So that is one of the reasons where I turn it around and I start from there and I work towards the outside. So I'm still working towards me. I'm just working in a different direction now. So, and there you are through. Gonna go put in there and I'm gonna go. And there you go. So from there, I'm just gonna go straight through. And again, you don't need to do this. It just works better for me. That's how I prefer doing it. If you find you want to leave and have the whole outside going, perfect. That's perfectly working. So now again, I'm starting from the inside, working towards myself. And I am just cutting that through. Something that you have to keep in mind as well when you are doing these designs. Um, sorry, I'm just going to backtrack. So what I've done there is you don't really have a, uh, a different way to do that, although you can. And I'm going to show you on the next one what you can do there. So I'm just going to go again and I'm going to go through. One thing with this is try and keep your fingers away so that once it goes through and it does slip, that you don't um, cut yourself. It's not nice to cut yourself. So what I've done with this one is I've started from the inside and um, let me show you here. I've started from there and then I've cut to that point. What you can do is you can start from this yeah, and you can cut your leaf or the design and you can go in here and you can cut the other side and then you can just go and you can cut that there so that does not matter um, you know whether you cut that one first or whether you first cut in here cut there and then cut that out I think it's how it's sort of your comfort level in the beginning, I might suggest to try and um, I just saw an extra piece there that I didn't cut. So in the beginning, it might be better for your comfort level if you do the two sides and then go into the inside rather than cutting and maybe you know, going in there. So what I've done there is when I saw I missed a piece, I just could have left it and I could have gone in afterwards with my scissor and just tidy that up as well. But I tend to try and just use my needle cutter. I'm going to fast forward the rest here. <laughs> Uh, 
was one or two pieces that I've actually, or spots that I've actually nipped into my design. Um, and then I realized there is a better way to do that. Uh, and, you know, it's, we know these things, but sometimes we just forget about them. When you have something like that and you're scared that you're going to, you know, go into your design, I will show you what you can do is you can almost trace it so very lightly you just put your needle tool onto your pewter where you're going to cut and you sort of make it you know that little groove you create that little groove where your needle is going to sit in and then from there once you start cutting it's already got that um like a guideline and that is going to prevent a swell for you to cut into your design. So that is another thing to keep in mind as well. And I think I've gone a little bit over with the wax at this low point here. I try not to wax outside my design, but sometimes it just happens. So yeah, there you go. And okay. So there, that piece is done. So again, I am just going to continue on with the rest of these. As you can see, there is quite a few of these um, ends that's really sharp, and but that is also because of the design that I've chose um, with this. So this is where I will go in with my scissors, and I will just really trim up those very, very, very sharp end, ends. One thing to do as well, is like I've mentioned, maybe let's do that first, is I go in with my tool, and I just run it all around the edges. But as you can see there, it's still that small, tight, little, tiny little piece um, that is there. And you will always get that when you are working with very sharp ends or, you know, like this in a triangle. But other than that, just go over and just smooth it out. So I'm going to go all around and just quickly smooth this so be careful when you do smooth and you have these flimsy little ends that you don't break them off i don't think they will really break but they do have a chance of doing that as i was um, cleaning up the sides i did realize as i've mentioned while i was cutting as well there's a couple of pieces that i didn't do so nice so I'm just going to come in with my little scissors they just absolutely work perfect for this because you don't have to worry about getting a nice bend going or a nice rounded shape going it is there so I'm just going to go all over and do this the nice thing about this is or when I let me just rather rephrase when I do this I can get sidetracked very easily so I would tend to focus on the same thing. I will go all around and just do my cuttings with the scissors. I would not focus on evening out the sharp points or anything like that because halfway through I'm going to forget this. Oh, I was actually busy doing that. Does things like that happen to you as well? Please share that with us in the comments if you are one of those that I'm starting with this and before I know it, I am halfway down doing something else. Okay, so that looks okay. Whoops. Actually, I think that one is really, I have to be very careful there. I think this one, I just need a little bit. I've cut it too wide. One thing about these little scissors is you keep on turning it around you know holding it but it gives you that nice um rounded 
shape if you cut with that i think it was mostly on that side oops and there goes that one too okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go in with this scissor and i'm literally just going to it will still have that point but i'm not sure if you can see very well there it does have like that little almost just like that little piece that's standing off there so that is what i am busy trying to get rid of and there you can see as well it has just that little bit of uh... now i just realized i might need to manicure because i've been painting quite a bit and then my hands is quite a bit in the water and i also i mean nowadays we do wash our hands quite often more than usual So I'm just going to go around and if I see there, I can just go in and trim that a little bit to give the idea of a sharp edge. And there it is cut out. So I think what I'm going to do is I will quickly put it onto my the wood canvas that I had prepared for this. So I've cleaned it up nicely. I have glued it on to the, or taped it down onto my board. I've added my name as well as this jewelry piece in the center to almost to be the focal point. And it does make a difference if you really cut something out nice and neatly. It is a little bit time consuming, but practice. And the more we practice, we are going to do it better and better. During this tutorial, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you was able to learn something. Also, if there is something that you know that is going to make it easier for the rest of us, absolutely go ahead, share it with us in the comments. If you have questions, please ask it in the comments. As for the design, the design is a, a tattoo design that I got from Pinterest. I will link it down below uh, to my board where I put my inspirations on. And what I usually do is when I do things like this, I always add it in the back, the sketch, and I would always reference to the artist, you know, the original artist. Unfortunately, the tattoo artist, it wasn't available. So I would add that the designer is unknown. But try, you know, start with something small, something like a flower or a butterfly, cut it out, work around it, and then go into more intricate. There is so much that you can do with um, cutting out your pewter and just adding it to, to another thing, just to give it another, another dimension, another layer on your mixed media pieces. So again, I hope you've enjoyed today and always remember, the world of reality has its limits, but the world of imagination is boundless.